Dr. Parikh, and we're talking about the discussion, specifically the discussion for your research proposal. When you go to pull up the template, be careful. When you look at this folder, you can see the way I have it organized right now. I've got the twos or the so the ones are what you need for the pre-writing activities, like like just reading your articles. The twos are what you need for the literature review paper. The threes are what you need for your research proposal, and then the fours are your peer review. And you can even see where uh, I added in the paraphrase writing sample, and so I had to use an asterisk because I didn't want to renumber everything. Um, so when you go for discussion, don't hit the first one, the 2C one. You want to look down. Ooh. Sorry, uh, my, old, my last video just start, finished saving. So you want to look for where it says discussion and it specifies research proposal. Uh, as you can see, this one talks about um, it, you need citations in with your limitations, uh, and it's talking you through doing it for other people's articles. But for the research proposal, you're focused on the study you've just suggested. Uh, so you're going to rewrite almost your entire discussion section for this one. And there's some extra paragraphs. Uh, for the discussion the first time, there is a summary paragraph that goes right after the discussion heading. But I have you write that up when you're doing your full literature review paper. Um, but for this discussion, I have you write up a summary paragraph and another paragraph talking about implications as part of your discussion draft, because I want to be able to give you feedback on that. Uh, so for the summary paragraph, you don't need a heading. It'll go right under the discussion. Again, you can look at sample papers to see how it's going to look. Uh, you've got a topic sentence. Um, and you want to make sure that it's kind of matching what you said in your roadmap paragraph and that it's matching your thesis now, that it's not your old uh, or your, your hypothesis, that it's not your old original thesis because you've probably shifted your focus a little bit. Uh, and then you want to say a little more about, you know, if this is supported, what would it mean? Um, or I'm sorry, just kind of explaining a little more plain English what you were looking for. Uh, so something that would be easy for a naive reader to understand. And then context, kind of saying why your study is important, what it would add to the literature. So you can look back to that present study paragraph and think about what uh, you've already said, how you've already said your study would be important. So implications, you would go down to a new paragraph, but you don't need to add a heading. And remember, there's no spacing between the paragraphs. You, this paragraph will start off with uh, an interpretation set, sentence. So again, you are not pretending that you have data, but you will say, if the data is supported, what would that mean? So let's say, if men show a higher levels of anxiety than women, then it might mean that blah, 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 blah. Um, and I give some examples, and you can look at the sample papers. Uh, so first, just say in general, it, just kind of again, you are explaining things in a very basic way uh, for a naive reader. And then you want to say how this would fit with previous findings. Often it's probably going to extend previous findings, so it might confirm or extend um, or clarify previous findings, but it might contradict things. You might be saying, well, you know, they're really missing out on this variable that could be important. So now if there's a difference, it would contradict their previous findings. Uh, so I give you some samples of how you might uh, say things. And I want you to come up with, uh, I'd like to see, do I specify? And I'd like to see you use, have at least two ways that it would connect with previous work. And I want you to include a citation, so saying specifically how would it fit with the studies you talked about in your introduction. Theory. Now here's where it gets, uh, this is probably the most difficult part of this section. I want you to think about the overarching theories. So not just specific findings, but what broad ideas and theories are they talking about here? Uh, and how would it fit with those theories? How would the theory explain it? Sort of why are you predicting what you're predicting based on what you see? Um, or, or just what, would ex what could explain it? Now, this section should look familiar, limitations in future research. Limitations should be easy to find because I'm forcing you to do a really simple, basic study that leaves out lots of important variables. 
Um, and so talk about what the limitations would be. And then for future research, say what you could do or what someone could do in the future that would help address those issues. Professional applications, uh, this can be a little tough because you've got one finding and you're trying to stretch it into two different applications. Uh, so I would, it, it's helpful to think about how two different types of professionals might use the work. Make sure that you're giving, you know, you're not just saying, well, a nurse could do this and a school counselor could do exactly the same thing. Um, you want to try to show differences uh, or different ideas of how things can be applied. You could use the same professional, but if you're doing that, make sure that it's very clear how they're doing two different things based on this finding. Just do your best. It could be a little bit of a stretch, um, but make sure it focuses on your study and on the main points of your study. Um, and that's your discussion section. You, you have the basic skills for how to do these things now. Uh, this implications paragraph is probably the newest thing that you're doing. But overall, you have the basics you need. Let's see if we can pull up a sample uh, real quick. If my computer doesn't cooperate, we'll just end. Let's see. Let's look at a discussion section. Here I'm on the one with the former cult members. Uh, so there's actually some issues with this one uh, because you see that here they just have one long paragraph. I would really prefer to see two. They're missing a period down here at the end. I usually fix these sorts of things before I put it up, but I must have missed it here. And then limitations is uh, that there's a heading down at the bottom that shouldn't be there. Uh, so this one's not the best sample in the world for that particular thing. Um, here. Uh, so this one's a bit stronger because you see these two separate paragraphs. Um, you do see some citations in here. And then you see it moves on to the limitations. And remember, the samples have limitations in future research separated. I used to do that. I'm not sure why. I was probably just mimicking what someone else had done. Uh, and so I realized it would be a little more clear. And it, APA doesn't have a really standard format for what order things go in the discussion. Um, these are all things that should be mentioned at some point. Um, you'll see, you know, the discussion section is probably where you see the most variation in what's there. The most consistent thing is probably the first paragraph or two that focuses on what the findings mean in context. All right, that's your discussion section. Happy writing. Bye-bye.